and welcome to the Digicel Education Webinar, Learning Without Boundaries. I am Jamisha Wright, and it is my pleasure to be your host today. We are especially grateful to our panel of enlightened speakers, all of whom live and work on the cutting edge of technology and education. With the advent of COVID-19, our children, teachers, and schools have all been impacted by fundamental changes. These incisive presentations will update us on the latest learning strategies, opportunities, and responses which can be deployed to manage those changes. We are passionate about innovative education processes, which will ensure learning continuity and advancement. And with that in mind, we offer you this forum, our digital education and learning without boundaries. Our first speaker is Robin Headley, based here in St. Lucia, and is the Managing Director of Discovery Education International. Discovery's curriculum expertise, digital resources, and teacher training are accessible in approximately 50% of K-12 schools in the U.S., 40% of primary schools in the U.K., and increasingly available across 90 countries globally. Robin will share with us the ways in which Discovery Education has partnered with Digicel and regional ministries of education to support continuity in learning in classrooms, homes, and on the go. Her team has had great success arming students with 21st century skills by weaving communication, creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking into developmental programs. Over to you. Robin Headley. Hi, I'm Robin Headley, Managing Director of Discovery Education International. I'm really pleased to be here today and to be part of this amazing initiative to help increase continuity of learning across the Caribbean. And that continuity is in the house, it's in the classroom, or it's elsewhere. I'd love to talk to you about Discovery Education. Discovery Education was founded by Discovery Communication, and Discovery Communication has many loved brands, such as Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, the Science Channel, Discovery Kids, and many more. Now, we were founded about 15 years ago, Discovery Education was, and we're a digital company that is concentrated on K-12 education. Our main expertise is STEM, and STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. One of the things that makes us very unique is that we focus very hard on building those 21st century skills that students need to be able to become the future of the islands. What does that mean? That means that we build the four C's into mm -hmm. our approach in everything that we do. Those four C's are critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication. And how do we do that? We focus very much on inquiry-based learning, which is asking kids to, to understand and ask questions rather than repeat back. And we also focus a lot on project-based learning, which is hands-on activities. I would love to share now a video that shows the discovery magic. I can take a field trip around the world, even though I've never been on an airplane. I can investigate the mysteries of the human body from the inside out. I can see the world through the eyes of others. I can experience what's happening today and understand what it means for tomorrow. I can do experiments and learn to think like a scientist. I can learn biology while I'm still learning English. I can solve problems that I couldn't understand before. I can dream. I can engage. I can build. I can achieve. I can learn. 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 
What I'd like to do now uh, is tell you about our services. So at the top of the pyramid, you'll see the curriculum alignment. We work with ministries around the world in order to develop best practice, internationally benchmarked curriculums for their countries. The second tier down on the pyramid, you'll see the products and services that we provide. You'll notice that some of those are core curriculum services, such as our award-winning tech book, science tech book and math tech book, and some of those are supplemental resources, and those include discovery education experience, STEM Connect, and coding. The third tier down you'll see is professional development. And during professional development, we train teachers to implement best practice pedagogical approaches in the classroom. And the fourth one down you'll see is activities. We often conduct STEM camps, STEM clubs, and we also do family days like STEMtastic Saturdays. And finally, the fifth level of the pyramid, and that support services. Everything we do, we support in terms of doing the project management for large-scale national rollouts, as well as doing monitoring and evaluation reports so that we can understand the impact that we are having. And then also working with the ministry teams and the community in order to make sure that we're communicating and marketing the right messages to internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. I'm really excited today to announce that we will be offering three supplemental resources across the Caribbean for the next couple months for free. Those are the Discovery Education Experience, they're the coding and the STEM Connect. So I'd like to start with Discovery Education Experience. Discovery Education Experience is a huge repository of resources. Those resources are videos, they're interactive, such as virtual labs, images, audio, and a number of other type of formats. What's great about this repository platform is that teachers, and students will be able to access it and they'll be able to search for what they want to find through the search, but they'll also be able to look and, and determine which, which topic they want to search for and what grade. Why that is important is that that enables us to be able to align that, those resources to the national curriculum. Another great thing about DEX is for teachers. So teachers have a number of strategies that they can implement both in the classroom and also through remote learning. And teachers have access to the largest teacher network in the world. Next, STEM Connect. STEM Connect is a really exciting resource. STEM Connect was based on the UN Sustainable Growth Goals as well as the Grand Engineering Challenges. And what it does is it challenges children to solve real world problems by using the knowledge that they have attained through their classes. So the children will use math, science, literacy, art, history, and other subjects to be able to solve a problem. What's really special about this is bringing in the project based and the inquiry based learning into this and also the connection to careers so that kids understand what they're learning in the classroom, how that applies to the real world, and how that's going to help them in their careers going forward. Finally, coding. Coding is a really exciting and fun resource as well. Coding was introduced in the UK in 2014 as mandatory in the curriculum from grade one, so from five-year-old, six-year-old kids. And we introduced coding in 2013. As such, um, we have developed a product that has enabled teachers who have never coded in their life be able to teach coding. Meanwhile, it evolved over time so that we also have, have developed it so that students who want to self-learn at home are able to also do that. So the product is incredibly flexible. The computational thinking skills that come out are very, very important. And what I want to mention now is that another webinar that we'll be doing will be featuring Andrew Tidswell, who is up with Discovery Education on how to teach computational thinking through coding with technology. But he'll also be able to talk to you about, if you don't have technology available, the different activities you can do in order to 
teach those same skills. So why do we do all this? It's because of student achievement. We found that students that use Discovery Education resources perform better in, on exams. Uh, they go to school more often. They're more engaged in the class. And in the end, they are actually achieving more. In closing, I'm really excited for this opportunity to be working with DigiCell and the Ministries of Education to help bring greater continuity in learning, whether in the classroom, at home, or elsewhere. Next up from Jamaica, we have Dwayne Campbell. He's the founder and CEO of BookFusion, a global ebook platform that redefines the reading experience. He established BookFusion while pursuing a master's degree in natural language processing at Columbia University. He continues developing and deploying transformative solutions that enhance learning and push reading beyond conventional boundaries. Please welcome Dwayne Campbell. Good afternoon. I am Dwayne Campbell, the founder and CEO of BookFusion. At BookFusion, we aim to revolutionize reading and in turn enhance and improve learning. Over the last decade, learning has been experiencing a digital transformation and with the advent of COVID-19, this transformation has been jolted into a new open digital and limitless reality. Traditional learning is no longer limited to four walls and a teacher. Classrooms have become just one of the many tools of the learning experience. Imagine for a moment John, a 12-year-old high schooler. He gets up in the morning, logs on to his first course of the day, physics, follows the discussion and class in his e-text on BookFusion. John is dyslexic, and as such, he activates the use of the open dyslexic font and indicates his comprehension level. The app adjusts the font and through natural language processing, simplifies the text to John's reading level. At the end of the class, he is prompted to submit his answers in the workbook to assess his understanding of the content. He immediately receives feedback on his assessment and his teacher is notified of the results of the entire class for possible gaps in learning. Later, John is attempting to self-study for an upcoming exam. For a change of scenery, he heads to the park and reads his chemistry e-text offline, where he is able to simulate lab experiments, watch videos, and conduct quizzes. After completing his other courses for the day, whether online or offline, both John and his teacher have a good idea of his progress in all his courses. This was made possible through reading and learning with BookFusion. As you can see, BookFusion allows government and educational institutions to offer a variety of interactive content, including question and answers, audio, video, read along, and animations. There are no limits to the interactivity supported. If you can do it with a physical book, it is likely you can do that and much more with BookFusion. With our partnership with Digicel, we would like to offer ministries of education and other government entities throughout the region a three-month trial in which we will do the following. Convert and make interactive five short pieces of your content or teacher-created content. Access to select from over 7,000 titles of open educational resources that cover primary, secondary, and tertiary. And lastly, launch your digital initiative starting with the digital library of your resources. We have already partnered with Oxford University Press, Collins, Macmillan Education, CXC, UE Press, and several other local and international publishers. This allows us to provide digital access not only to your content, but also to the same content that you use today in the classroom. To close, Learning is simply the acquisition of knowledge or skills through study, experience, or being taught. It is the basic transfer of knowledge through the provision of content from teacher to student. At the heart of learning, the distribution, transfer, and consumption of knowledge and content remains key. Distribute your lesson plans, worksheet, textbook, quizzes, study materials, and other content in a way that is open, interactive, engaging, accessible, and effective. 
just ask us how. Please email us at education at bookfusion.com to start your trial today. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. I'm inspired to witness such an amazing platform being developed here in our region. Well done to you and your team. We look forward to working with you to bring Book Fusion to every child and teacher in the English speaking Caribbean. Coming up next, all the way from uh, Tallinn in Estonia, is Matt Arrow, co founder of Dream Apply and chair of Nordic EdTech Forum. Matt is also the co founder of European EdTech Alliance, EduTech. EduTech is dedicated to helping teachers develop their digital teaching skills. Teachers must now function in both hybrid and blended environments using new digitized curriculum. Navigating this new world of online learning has therefore become both a challenge and a budding opportunity. Please welcome Matt Arrow. Greetings, this is Mart Aro speaking, and I'm very happy to see you all here at the presentation. I'm coming from the future, and uh, this future is where the government services are 99% online, doing taxes takes about 3 minutes, establishing a company takes about 20 minutes, and voting for parliament since already 2004 is possible to do online. Of course, internet is considered a human right, and you can become an e-resident or get a startup visa to take advantage of these services. What is the country where I'm from? It's called Estonia. Estonia is number one in Europe according to the PISA test, and also as other countries, also Estonia had to close down the schools uh, on 13th of March to. Um, facilitate education online. All the school bu buildings have been closed from, from then and uh, now we are um, offering education still online for uh, the children and um, Estonia was technically very well prepared for this of course and the government um, uh, has been having a very good cooperation with, with the startups in education to um, enable this kind of uh, uh, smooth transition to home learning. The government uh, set up um, special websites, uh, also the sub-organizations of the Ministry of Education uh, have been setting up programs to support uh, both schools and uh, also parents and teachers uh, during the crisis. Uh, also the citizens have been very active. Uh, there has been an initiative to ask people to donate their computers that they don't need uh, or uh, also companies uh, have made big donations uh, by now 12,000 computers have uh, been donated and delivered to the children in need. Also, Estonia didn't want to keep it all for themselves. Um, uh, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, uh, we have set up uh, Education Nation webinars where you can uh, read about and see about um, how Estonia has been tackling the crisis and learn a little bit about the Estonian way of doing things. And you're more than welcome to go into YouTube, for example, and check this out directly from there. In addition, on the Nordic level, we also did a joint collaboration called the Teach Millions, where we invited all the companies that have education technology that they can offer for free uh, to schools and, and uh, learners all across the world to, to join forces and set up a website called teachmillions.org. And um, feel free to go there and just look out. Um, maybe there is some kind of solutions that could be valuable for you and that could help you in, uh, in solving some kind of um, issues in your education systems. Teach Millions, uh, yes, uh, and there... In addition, we set up also a thing called Nordic Ethic Forum. Uh, this is an association of innovators in education, um, and it's bringing together innovators from out of eight countries in the Northern Europe, um, in total, there is 160 innovators uh, that have joined into this association and all of them are kind of working together to try to improve the quality of learning experience uh, that we are experiencing in schools. I will bring just a few examples 
first example is 99Math. Um, this is um, a real life solution that enables to do competitions in calculating by heart. And uh, feel free to um, uh, check out this video. So just 99 math enables you to uh, look at um, how kids can compete with each other in calculating by heart. It's a really fun kind of esports way of uh, looking at learning mathematics. And um, it's for free, uh, available at the moment uh, globally. And um, you just uh, need to go to the website and set up um, a game uh, to, to play and uh, have fun while learning mathematics. Then the next, uh, the next solution that I wanted to talk about is called the Grafo game. <clears throat> a Grafo game is a solution that is uh, built to help kids to learn how to read. And um, why it was uh, set up in the first place was that um, uh, a university in Finland uh, was looking for a better way how to teach uh, reading. Because um, if, especially if you have kids that have some kind of disabilities or learning differences, then it can be very tedious to teach them how to read. And um, so they, they looked at the methodology that we use to teach the children. They found that actually the, the way that we teach uh, children how to read is not the most uh, easily understandable for the human brain. So they developed a better uh, methodology to uh, help kids how to learn reading. And it's a syllable-based uh, approach uh, for teaching how to read. And then they uh, didn't know how to make it into a nice product. So they contacted one of the largest startups in education in Finland and they asked for a cooperation. And the startup agreed and uh, together then they set up uh, the game called Grafo Game. And uh, this is available for uh, the whole world now. Cambridge University ran a study on, on this and they actually said that there is no difference if the child is learning alone behind the game or if a teacher is uh, helping them. And let's have a look at the video as well. Sit. Cat. Tan. Tin. Sin. And uh, the next solution that I wanted to have a look at is called uh, Mobilab. And Mobilab is a very interesting new tool because, um, you know, when we need to learn something, very often it's about the way that we learn things. Uh, so we should choose the best methodology to learn something. And um, very often we have been uh, having difficulties uh, of, of the context. How can we explain the context in a fast and a convenient way for the learner to understand what we are talking about? And Mobilab built a platform that enables a teacher with just a few clicks to create new uh, 3D uh, tools for explaining things in uh, augmented reality. And uh, why I really like this, uh, this service is that uh, it, beforehand it was very difficult to set up learning materials in augmented reality, whereas now it's uh, just a few clicks away. And I wanted to uh, show Welcome, a video from Shark Trek. care to enter, Commander? I do. So in this video, we can see that um, uh, the Commander, Commander Riker is uh, stepping into a room, uh, into a virtual environment where it looks very similar to a real environment. And uh, it, this was already dreamed uh, in 1950s by Ray Bradbury. And in 1988, this was made into a movie. 
and uh, Star Trek, Trek uh, holodeck is, uh, is what we are looking at. And today we actually are able to already create this kind of environments very similar to the holodeck. And let's have a look at the video that is possible to do with the uh, uh, mobile app sol uh, solutions. Setting up an AR portal. And you can hear even the sound is available uh, there and we can go into any kind of environments uh, across the glo globe and learn about these environments, uh, not even physically going into another room, but we are just staying in our, let's say, school environment and we can zoom into any any uh, fun place. So, and, and how, just to make it very simple, uh, if you're reading about the Amazon jungle in a, a geography book, then it can be quite difficult to imagine what the jungle actually looks like. And, and with this technology, you can go and zoom into any animals in the Amazon jungle and uh, enjoy this together with your classmates. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed the short discussion. Thank you, Matt Arrow. I am very conscious that it is late in the evening for you, and we are so grateful for your time and, of course, your contribution. We now turn to someone who has been in the education technology field for more than 20 years, working with a range of companies, including Vertical Net, Excited Home, Beyond Books, and Teachscape. Introducing Jeffrey Drayton. He joins us today as the co-founder of Educatech, Teach Virtual Online. Educatech focuses primarily on the profession. My name is Jeff Drayton and I'm the head of business development for a company called Educatech, Teach Virtual Online. And I'm delighted to be here as the guest of Digicel. I've spent more than 24 years of my career in educational technology and online learning. The current mission of our company today is to help the teachers navigate this new paradigm, making the transition from remote emergency teaching to online teaching and learning. And we do this by helping the ministries build capacity within their teaching core to scale and to provide a consistent base of online teaching for all students. In bringing along the teachers, the parents, and the students' peers, we provide guides and mentors to everyone with the hope that the students will be empowered to take the responsibility for the learning into their own hands. As they say, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. The company does this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, we provide courseware and software to teachers and leaders of schools, superintendents, directors, uh, so that they can improve their skills in this new paradigm. We combine that with state-of-the-art, high-quality, interactive content that is both self-paced for the students or teacher-led, with the goal of creating learning pathways for the students to connect to their passion with their peers and for a purpose. We teach critical thinking, collaboration, communication, and creativity. This slide's a little complicated, um, but essentially we're sitting in the lower left-hand quadrant now. We have our LMS, we have some digital content, we have e-books and e-readers and e-grade books, but where we want to go in the, in the future, we want to take this to personalized, individualized learning so that every student can take part and the opportunities that are out there. This is our chance to reimagine education, to give equal opportunity to everyone. I did want to take a little moment to recognize a small group of St. Lucia teachers uh, who participated in one of our courses. Uh, more than 80% of them finished the entire course in just four weeks. And certainly any company would be extremely proud of the feedback and the comments that we received from those teachers. We thank them for their energy, for their motivation, and their for persistence. They were really an amazing group of teachers. And lastly, I wanted to pass along a quote from a colleague who gave this to his students and to his fellow faculty members. 
No one signed up for this. Not for the sickness, not for the social distancing, not for the sudden end of our collective lives and collaboration on campus, not for online classes, not for teaching remotely, not for learning from home, not for learning new technologies under duress, not for limited access to learning materials. But the human option will be our best option. We will provide kindness and supporting each other as humans. We will provide simple solutions that work for the most. We will prioritize sharing resources and communicating clearly. I hope that some of you will join us on this journey as we navigate this new paradigm. I can be reached at the email below, jeff at teachvirtual.online. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Jeffrey Drayton. With yet another perspective on this universe of digital learning and teaching, we welcome Dr. Wayne Wesley. He is the Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Examination Council, the CXC. He brings us 25 years of experience in education and training, built on a PhD in Industrial Engineering from Florida State University, and postgraduate work in education at Harvard University and Manchester Business School. What an honor for us, Dr. Wayne Wesley. Good day, colleagues. Let me start by congratulating Digicel as the organizers of this timely digital education webinar, Learning Without Boundaries. The Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, is pleased to be associated with this not only timely, but relevant webinar. The Caribbean Examination Council was established in 1972 under the agreement of 16 participating governments, empowered to conduct such examinations as deemed appropriate and award certificates and diplomas for such examinations. Digital transformation is an imperative. Therese Turner-Jones, General Manager at IDB, gave the region a rating of 5 out of 10 with regards to readiness. She states, and I quote, we are not nearly as ready as we should be. We should have mobile devices, millions in the region. However, we do not have as much digital use regarding services, government and private, end of quote. Resilience is another imperative the critical challenge now facing regional economies is one of resilience. Sustaining meaningful economic activities during periods of natural disasters or health pandemic. An ability to mitigate the impact of these existential threats on developing economies of the region remains a top priority. The education system is one of the most critical of any economy, and this is so because it develops most of the valuable assets of any country, its human capital. Therefore, crucial to building resilience, to continue and sustain critical economic activities for development and growth, requires an infrastructure revolution, the core of which is digital transformation. Digital transformation is not only vital, but crucial in fostering resilience. It is within this resilient environment that the crucial function of developing the human capital through, teach, through the teaching, learning, and assessment process will continue without disruption. Thirdly, the education imperatives, 
supported by digital transformation for access to be universal, equity to be fair, quality to be standardized, and relevance to be applicable. To support the education imperatives, the delivery mechanism requires a digital infrastructure. Therefore, teaching, learning, and assessment must experience digital transformation as teaching provides designed experiences through simulations, digitization of learning resources for online consumption, and assessment providing performance reports such as data portals with descriptive and predictive analytics to inform teaching, and as well as validation of outcomes from the learning process using digital credentialing as a means of validating certification. CXC has embarked on an e-strategy encompassing one, e-learning hub, which allows for the provision of a single collaborative and engaging space online to access digital and other resources to support teaching, learning, and assessment. Secondly, e-testing, which allows for automation of the test development process and the online delivery of tests. Thirdly, e-marking, which allows for digitization of the marking process and as well as improving quality control and monitoring capabilities. And finally, e-certification, which allows for the dissemination of digital credentials. Accordingly, the transformation agenda of the Caribbean Examination Council is not just to project itself as an examining body, but a regional enterprise that demonstrates a degree of fairness a degree of awareness and collective understanding of the scope, risk, and challenges facing the region. Therefore, CXC, as a regional enterprise, will facilitate regional integration and development by becoming the premier regional authority on influencing teaching, learning, and assessment through the infusion of digital technology informed by research and development. Digital transformation of stakeholders interaction using technology to drive innovative solutions, such as the data portals I mentioned earlier on, giving interrogative capabilities for descriptive and predictive analytics, dashboards, and digital validation of results. We will also seek to deploy our e-testing system in schools to provide familiarity and preparation for both teachers and students so the use of technology does not affect one's performance while writing an assessment. This transformation agenda is not without challenges. In particular, the infrastructure challenge, internet penetration as it relates to last mile connectivity, particularly for persons in remote areas, and the infrastructure cost to procure equipment such as computers and other critical devices. These challenges, while, while formidable, are not insurmountable, and collectively we can find optimal digital solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, it was my pleasure sharing my thoughts with you. May God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Wesley, Registrar and Chief Executive Officer at the CXC. I am sure that many students, parents, and teachers were listening to your every word given the pivotal role CXC plays across the Caribbean. We now hear from another highly regarded professional in this expanding field. Mr. Alexis Sychess is Director of Business Insights with Edmodo.
Edmodo is trusted by 150 million users worldwide for communication, collaboration, and learning features required to drive learning outcomes. With COVID-19 dramatically changing the educational landscape, Edmodo has chosen to work with us at Digicel across the Caribbean to give teachers, students, and parents some of the critical tools they need for both in-classroom and distance learning. And we at Digicel are very proud of this partnership. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexis Hekas. I'm the Director of Business Insights here at Edmodo. I'd like to thank all the ministers of education, as well as their colleagues in different ministries from around the region. I also want to send a warm thank you to Digicel for allowing us to be part of this initiative. Uh, I'll just be spending a few minutes discussing Edmodo and, and, and what we do. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. So uh, we began as a company 12 years ago, giving teachers the tools they needed to run flipped learning and blended learning and distance learning. Um, but in 2020, unfortunately, these tools have become a, a necessity for uh, teachers around the world. So what is Edmodo? So what we do best is collaboration and, commun and communication. Uh, we combine the best features of a, a learning management system, as well as your favorite features from a social platform. So in the past 12 years, we've now uh, gr we've grown very rapidly and now have users in almost every country in the world. Uh, we have 125 million users around the world, almost 2 million of them um, call the Caribbean and Central America home. Uh, we have a number of large scale deployments with countries such as Egypt, Ghana, Kenya, as well as large districts in the US such as Miami-Dade uh, here in Florida. And we know how learners like to learn. And with Edmodo, you're getting high adoption rates, uh, you're getting improved classroom interactions, and you're really building the, a community of, of teachers, students, and parents. And with our experiences from the last three months, we know how to deliver a successful uh, distance learning rollout. Uh, you're going to get improved collab communication collaboration. Um, and, and now we've offered, uh, we have a new tool to, uh, to do lesson delivery. One great thing about Edmodo is it really reflects how education um, uh, takes place in real life. So teachers are able to bring in their uh, students and, and do quizzes and assignments and research sharing, but the same teachers can use Edmodo to connect and collaborate with educators as well as receive professional development. And just like in, in, in real life, parents are a large part of, uh, of Edmodo uh, and, and are able to follow their children uh, during their learning path. Some challenges uh, educators face uh, in 2020 and this even before coronavirus, uh, the communication silos are, are some teachers using email, others are using WhatsApp, others are using other tools. Edmodo brings everything in one place. There's very low engagement rates. That, that, it, getting teachers to adopt tools to, to use in the classroom can, can often be very challenging. And these tools aren't built for, for distance learning. But Edmodo really is. Um, Edmodo is safe, it's secure, Every, all the tools are in one place, it's private, uh, it has uh, research sharing and, and assessment tools, and it's built with uh, organizations and ministries in mind. So I'm going to very quickly go over our product. Uh, Edmodo, is, as I mentioned before, is very easy to use, it's very user friendly. You don't need a guidebook uh, to, to use Edmodo. Uh, teachers have uh, access to, to 21st century tools that they're looking for, including progress and storage, assignments, quizzes, and planners, and in a very pr private and safe, secure educational space. Edmodo was built for, uh, uh, for the ed education and is built by teachers for teachers. At Emoto, you can centralize all your communication. And you can have uh, communication, whether from on a computer or on the go. And also for admins, uh, you have access to a lot of great tools, um, to analytics, you can award badges, you can uh, create learning communities. And one thing that you can do now is uh, uh, countries can upload and share all the, the content that they have with all their, their teachers and students. And now we're, uh, we are built for, for administrations and organizations, and, and we make it really easy to do large-scale rollouts across Edmodo. And we have online uh, distance uh, uh, lesson delivery platform uh, that's integrated within Edmodo. All of this is packaged into uh, one feature set called Edmodo Enterprise. 
and with our experience now, we're able to get entire countries up and running on Emoto within just a matter of weeks. Uh, we can bring in classes, teachers, students, all the way up to the Ministry of Education, uh, like we've done in, in Egypt. Egypt chose Edmodo as the, the, the learning platform for the entire country. Um, in just a few weeks, 1 million teachers are already online uh, with 11 million students, and we are integrating with the uh, Egypt Knowledge Bank to bring in all of the content they have uh, to those teachers and students. So thank you once again for your time. I really look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you, Alexis. Incredibly insightful as always. We are now joined by Richard Percy, CEO of SafetyNet and co-founder of the SafetyNet Foundation. Cyberbullying, sextortion, abuse, and aggression are rising internet threats. Richard believes that big technology companies should do more to ensure the safety of the 500 million children online at any one time. Richard has therefore developed tools to redress this. With his background in behavioral analytics and data patterning, Richard is well placed to address the mental health challenges facing children who live in the online world. Please welcome our next speaker, Richard Pussy. Hello everybody, my name is Richard Percy and I'm the CEO of SatanNet and it's an absolute pleasure to talk with you today from my lockdown home here in not so sunny London. And it's wonderful isn't it that technology allows us to interact in this way. Human beings are built to socialise and if we didn't have tech like this well we really would be struggling right now. But of course the problem that we have is that the internet wasn't designed with safety in mind. It wasn't designed for children. And yet there's over 500 million children right now, right this moment as we're talking, online, socialising, interacting, using social networks, messaging apps, chat rooms and so on. The internet though isn't regulated, it's not governed, there isn't a country in the world that has really got to grips with this and so the worst people in the world can post unpleasant content that our children can see at the click of a button. Our children are vulnerable. Children are naturally vulnerable. They're easy to trick because they're young and they don't have the life skills to know when they're being conned um, or frauded or predated upon. So that's the reason why Satanet exists. We're absolutely passionate about keeping children safe online. And we've developed some, what we think is pretty clever technology using artificial intelligence that can keep children safe in the moment, in real time. And it filters harmful content. It can detect threats such as bullying and sextortion and abuse and aggression in the moment as the child is using the keyboard on their device. So this next video is going to show you a little bit how our software works and how we try and balance the absolute rights of privacy that a child has with the primal need of a parent to keep their child safe online. So hopefully this video will explain a little bit more about what our software does and how it works. SafetyNet is an app that is downloaded onto both the parent and child device. For the child, it installs a safeguarding keyboard that is there to help and guide your child as they explore and interact online. Our keyboard has often been described as a digital friend, an online buddy that is there to look out for your child, to steer them away from trouble and to guide them when they may be at risk of making a mistake. Like all good friends, the keyboard is always there for the child but always respects their privacy and never lets anyone know what the child is saying, who they are talking to and what they are seeing. As an example, Watch how the safeguarding keyboard glows amber or red depending on the severity of the message. Now see the software as it detects a child struggling with dark thoughts. Notice how it detects messages of despair and then gives advice and guidance to the child in real time and most importantly in the moment. Our software is designed to detect other risks too. 
Watch how the keyboard detects that the conversation might be of a sexual nature and glows amber to act as a warning. Now notice that as the risk increases, the keyboard glows red and furthermore removes the dangerous words. The advice and guidance has also changed and this time to reflect the nature of the risk the software has detected. Now see what happens when a child is being bullied and when they increase their risk by potentially making matters worse. The software senses that the child might be a victim and sends a supporting message. But when the child tries to respond to the bully, it filters their text and prevents them from escalating the issue and of course their risk. But safety net isn't just about safety. It's also about understanding the mental health impact on a child living in the digital world where fear, anxiety and issues of low self-esteem can be triggered by one unpleasant post or message. This is why the SafetyNet software includes a well-being assistant that provides children with audio guides in the moment and as the software detects a problem. In this example, See how an issue with bullying triggers the well-being assistant to offer the child the chance to listen to a soothing breathing exercise designed to calm their emotions. Each of these well-being exercises has been created by independent child psychology experts to help children deal with online issues. These include low self-esteem, anxiety management, dealing with stress, bullying and coping with loneliness. Crucially, these well-being exercises are private to the child who might find it difficult to speak to their parents about their inner feelings. SafetyNet is also designed to help parents too and to give them a high-level overview of their children's risks online. By downloading the companion app onto their device, parents are presented with a safety indicator. The safety indicator is a circle the fuller the circle, the safer their child. It is determined by many inputs that relate to the child's online digital life. These include things like the risks they face, the time of day that the messages are sent and especially if sent during the night, the apps they are using and many more. Changes in the safety indicator would generate notifications to the parent, advising them when they might need to take action on various risks. The app provides parents with advice and guidance to help them identify issues and to have a more informed discussion with their child about the online risks. So hopefully you can see from that video how vitally important the SafetyNet software is. It isn't just about keeping children safe online, it's also about looking after them when they're suffering from mental health issues, suffering from being bullied, suffering from anxiety, stress and fear and so on. And so I do hope that you can take advantage of the SatanNet software. Please download it today and safeguard as many children as you possibly can. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Richard, and the team at SatanNet. We look forward to bringing this invaluable forum to every student and parent across the Caribbean to protect our children whenever they're online. I now introduce someone also involved in the delivery of digital products and services in the education sector. She is my friend and colleague, Lisa Lewis, Marketing Director at Learning Hub Online Education Limited. HLO Education offers a regional e-learning and exam preparation platform via the website www.learninghub.online. Today, the site has over 100,000 registered users and is accessed by several Caribbean governments to provide local content to primary and secondary schools. Lisa has served as chair of the Digital Jamaica Foundation and worked closely with the Ministry of Education in Jamaica to successfully achieve the United Nations Development Goal of 80% literacy at grade four level. Please welcome Lisa Lewis of LHO Education.
Welcome to Learning Hub Online, the Caribbean's premier e-learning and exam preparation website with over 100,000 students registering to date. Learning Hub Online is the brainchild of Dr. Charlotte Ashman, a Jamaican teacher who went on to do her doctorate in e-learning methodologies and brain training. Learning Hub Online is a content-rich e-learning platform that follows the syllabus for the Caribbean education system curating learning materials for students spanning grades 1 through 13. Learning Hub that online was created in order to level the playing field for all Caribbean students, as we wanted to ensure that all students could access the highest standards of education and achieve an a average, regardless of which school they attended or whether or not they had access to personal tutors. Learning Hub that online is the largest database of curated content for the Caribbean student with over 450,000 pages of digital content, over 5,000 topic-specific quizzes, and over 300 mock exams. We are the only website that allows for short answer written questions, which are graded by our teachers. Our app is available in the Google Play Store, and you can access learninghub.online 24-7 from your phone, tablet, or laptop. We have the widest array of subjects generally based on the Caribbean syllabus used by various ministries of education spanning grades one to six in the primary cohort. Key subjects in these grades include language arts, mathematics, and integrated studies. For the secondary schools, we cover grades seven through to 11, as well as sixth form, also known as grades 12 and 13 in some markets. We have the most subjects that are geared towards the Caribbean student matriculation as we closely follow the CSEC and CAPE syllabi. So I invite you to register today at our website, www.learninghub.online, where today and for the next three months, in collaboration with our regional partner, Digicel, registration is free for all learning materials in your grade. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. We know what busy schedules all our presenters have, and so we take this moment to convey our thanks to all of them and to you for being here with us. We now turn to Scott Smith, and he is the Vice President of Global Business Development. Scott has two decades of experience in education and technology, and now works with Matific, a suite of math games and worksheets for young learners. These are specifically designed to address global issues encountered in primary mathematics classrooms. Students are given various real-world problem-solving tasks that require the application of mathematical skills to solve them. Matific is aligned with national curricula in 47 countries, forging multiple partnerships with ministries of education around the world. Scott? Over to you. Hello, my name is Scott Smith, Vice President of Matific. I'm here today to introduce you to our company, which is a Maths K through 6 digital resource. And hopefully, uh, by the end, you will see quickly how Matific can be used at scale across your country to help improve numeracy skills um, and improve mathematics education. Our way of doing business in mathematics is through game-based learning. What we've done is we've created a platform that has thousands of activities that are curriculum aligned and teachers choose those activities and they assign them as either schoolwork or homework. Uh, we also have a section which is called full course, which is self-directed learning, allowing students to play and practice those math skills on their own. And so Matific is something that's been being used uh, all around the world. And one of the things that's helped us be so successful is our balance between rigor and engagement. Our company was founded on these on 10 pedagogical principles, which I'll talk to in just a minute. Uh, but we've got an academic board who's made up of uh, early childhood childhood uh, specialists as well as mathematicians. 
These people have taught from universities ranging from Israel to the United States, some of the best universities in the U.S., including MIT and Stanford and UC Berkeley. And through their involvement, we've been able to design really highly engaging games that have the rigor that's required for uh, the curriculums all around the world. Now, Matific is a program that is used at scale. It's used at home. It can be used at school. Uh, it's used on any, any device. So, for example, teachers can uh, assign activities for their kids uh, to play, and those students can play Matific on a parent's phone. They can play it on auntie's phone, grandmother's phone. They can play it on a computer. They can play it in the library. They can play it anywhere. Each student has their own username and password, and that username and password allows that child access to Matific anywhere that they can get onto a device. We at Matific have lots of experience working with governments. We currently work with over 25 governments around the world, ministries of education. Um, these implementations that we've done range from big implementations in the United States in South America, such as Colombia and Peru and Chile and Uruguay, all the way down to big implementations in Ghana, South Africa, and India. So I understand that there's technology considerations, constraints in the Caribbean. I can assure you that Matific works really well in these type, different types of environments, partly because Matific does work offline. Matific works offline when using a parent's phone, mobile phone, or a tablet. So it, Matific does not require internet connection all the time in order for the students to be successful and learn their math skills. So this is partly why we've been so successful in many developing countries around the world. Now, there's lots of challenges when you come to deploy a program like Matific. Uh, some of that is around language. I will address this right now, is that Matific is available in over 40 five languages. These languages include obviously English, UK English, as well as US English, but also we have Matific available in Spanish, in French, in Dutch, and practically most other common languages used. We do have the ability to map and align our contents to the textbooks being used by the Ministry of Education. We've already adapted our content to be universal in terms of cultural cult culture, so you do not have to worry about maybe cons cultural considerations. We align our curriculum, our content, to the national curriculum in all countries that we work with. So we've done this in 60 countries around the world. We have mapped our contents to the national curriculum. That has allowed for fantastic reporting at a school level, at a child level, at a district level, and up to a ministry level. We do provide teacher training to help upskill the teachers and provide some knowledge transfer on how to use ed tech programs such as Matific. So we offer that type of training as well. We have some assessments, and again, we take advantage of the technology um, that's accessible to the student. Just to give you a couple examples from around the world, Matific is currently being used in over 70% of the schools in Estonia. And if you've never heard of Estonia before, uh, I'll quickly educate you about Estonia. Estonia is a small country uh, in Europe, near Russia, uh, but they are one of the most advanced school systems in the world, even better than Finland, even almost better, almost as good as Singapore. 70% of the schools in Estonia use Matific. We're very proud of that fact. We're very proud to work with the Ministry of Education in Estonia because our philosophy about problem solving, critical thinking, developing analytical skills is in perfectly alignment with their inquiry-based curriculum in Estonia. Now, we've also worked with other countries and other places that are more developing, such as Tamil Nadu, India. We did a pilot last year for two months where we had 23,000 students in the rural parts of Tamil Nadu, India, use Matific. One of the things that we did is we did a survey before and after the pilot where we asked the students some questions, five basic questions, yes or no. I want to learn maths. 
Before the pilot, 33% of the students in Tamil Nadu said, yes, I want to learn maths. After two months of using Matific, 64% of the students said, yes, I want to learn maths, answering that same question. I like the tasks we do in maths. Went from 44% to 67. I think I'm good at maths. We improved their motivation and confidence, going from 52% to 70%. I enjoy maths homework. Big jump, 23% to 60%. And maths is terrible. Going in the right direction, going down. Now, that's important statistics to show because one year later, the Tamil Nadu government which is responsible for one and a half million students across the entire state. These are very low socioeconomic students. Tamil Nadu is providing Matific to all government schools across the entire state. And this announcement was just from a few days ago. Now what I'll do is I'd like to turn this over to a short video from a student who I had the opportunity and privilege to invite on stage in Ghana. And I'd like to actually invite uh, one of my special, my special guests, Letitia, onto the stage. She's going to help me with the last part of our discussion. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Letitia, for joining me. So Letitia School started using Matific how long ago? Um, about a month. About a month ago. Okay, so it's only been a month that her school's been using, and, and she'll share some of her, her findings, uh, uh, some of what she's learned about Matific so far. Um, actually, before I go to this slide, tell the group a little bit about your experiences with just mathematics in general. Okay. I hated math. <laughs> it was the most difficult subject ever. Indeed. My friends and I always prayed that a math teacher wouldn't show up in class. And when he did, we prayed he forgets to give us homework. I feared math so much to the point where if you asked me to choose between doing my math homework or skipping my math homework and being punished, I would choose skipping my math homework and being punished instead of going through the pain of doing maths. This is a common problem. Almost every child feels math is very difficult and boring. Indeed, that used to be my testimony until the Ministry of Education introduced Matific in my school. Matific is an application that makes the teaching and learning of math very easy and exciting. My mother is so happy that she no longer has to chase me around the house to do my math homework because that is no more intimidating. I love playing computer and mobile phone games. Every child does. I never get tired of playing Candy Crush, Zuma, or Monster Invasion. This is what makes Matific an excellent app. Every mass activity appears in the form of a fun game. I actually feel like I'm playing a game when using Matific, but I'll be solving actual mass problems. Because of Matific, I know because of Matific, Matific has made a math simple and easier for every child to use. I know I have a strong foundation in math to become an economics, mathematician, or software engineer to help Ghana my motherland. I am confident that in future I will pursue a career in the STEM field. My name is Lekwenda Letisha Nadidi Afute Ajin. And I believe every child she is matific. Thank you. Don't go any don't go anywhere. So I'm gonna ask you a few more questions as, as we go. So Matific, um, look, like I mentioned earlier, it can be used on any device, anytime, anywhere, any place. Um, so how have you been using Matific the most? On, on what? What, what, have, what have you been using it on? I've been using it on my mobile phone. Whose phone? My mom's. Your mom's. And how yeah. often does she let you use it? Anytime I want it, I can Anytime. come for it. And how, about how many minutes are you playing Matific each week, you think, over the last month? Five hours. Five hours? Yes, okay. in a week. 
And that's five more hours of doing mass than you otherwise would have been doing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think one of the things that we've seen just in a short period of time is, you know, half of the students that are using Matific are using it on, on mobile devices. Uh, their parents' device or family members' device, um, they're finding it. And we see that all around the world. Thank you, Scott Smith at Matific. We now turn to Catherine Whitaker, CEO of EtonX, a subsidiary of Eton College UK, one of the world's finest educational institutions. EtonX creates innovative technology and high quality course materials to develop soft skills in teenagers. Since launching in 2018, Students in over 40 countries have taken courses in its Future Skills program. Catherine is a career innovator in digital content and online learning. Please welcome from the UK, Catherine of EtonX. Hello, my name is Catherine Whitaker and I'm the CEO of EtonX. I'm talking to you from Lockdown London you might know Eton College, it's the best known of the UK boarding schools and it's almost 600 years old but what's important about it for our purposes is it has a reputation for producing leaders in every field of life, students who are ready to take on the challenges that await them after school and that's what we're about too. EtonX is an education technology company and our future skills programme is about building up the kind of skills that students need in order to, to succeed in life, no matter what that may bring. We are about closing the global skills gap. Now this gap is something that employers and universities have noticed, and it's often noticed by students themselves when they get into the workforce or when they successfully arrive at university to, to study their degree program, they often realize that some of the skills that they really need are not the academic skills they've been focusing on at school, but they're the kind of skills around confidence and impactfulness, which don't always come about as a result of a successful education. So that's why we've launched the Future Skills Programme. It's a series of short online courses. There are 11 in total, and they are for students aged 14 to 20. We offer them in a self-study mode and also in a fully tutored mode in our online classroom. Both modes are highly interactive and they're about building up students' ability to be successful in later life. You can see we have a range of different titles. For example, we have the very soft skills such as resilience or creative problem solving or verbal communication. We have things that are a little bit more career focused such as entrepreneurship or interview skills. And we also have courses that are very good for building up academic skills such as writing skills or critical thinking. All our courses are available in our platform and the virtual classroom that we are, have integrated into that platform has been developed by us, so it's Ethernet technology. This is very different to the kind of video conferencing tools that are currently being used to deliver education across the world. Our virtual classroom has been built specifically for education and therefore the tutor is at the heart of the experience. She can decide what the, what the students are seeing at any one time. She has control over the students. And therefore, it's a much more focused communicative experience than a, a, a call that you might get on a video conferencing software, such as the one we're probably using right now. We make our technology available as well as our content for large clients. So we do have partners who are taking the technology element of what we offer, as well as our course content. I've just given you a little taste here of what kind of materials we have. It's a very video rich environment. We have lots of talking head, head videos from subject matter experts and from teachers at Eton. But these skills can only be developed if students are able to relate them to their everyday lives. And therefore, we have a lot of interactive and engaging content such as surveys, reflection tasks, decision-making tasks and interactive reading tasks. Obviously, we believe that the benefit to students is the content of the course themselves, but there are some allied benefits, such as the fact that we, we certify all our courses when the student successfully completes, 
and those certificates are very attractive to employers and universities who are looking for these skills. We've also noticed our students build up confidence and they increase their communication capabilities as well. I would say that our program was de de all designed before COVID came along, but right now we know that these skills are more important than ever, and especially skills such as resilience that we all need in order to cope with the changes that lie ahead of us. I very much look forward to welcoming students from your country to EtonX. Our next presenters are Halsey Rogers and Svetlana Sobradawal. Halsey Rogers is lead economist with the World Bank's Education Global Practice and co-author of the World Bank's recent report, The COVID-19 Pandemic, Shocks to Education and Policy Responses. Halsey has represented the World Bank in negotiations on education, led the bank's global teacher policy research and co-authored the publication Education Strategy 2020, Learning for All. Shwetlena Sabadawal is a senior economist at the World Bank. She was a principal author of the World Development Reports, Changing Nature of Work, and Learning to Realize Education's Promise. Please welcome Halsey Rogers and Shwetlena Sabadawal. Hello. My name is Svetlana, I'm from the World Bank, and I will be talking about the ways in which COVID-19 will impact education around the world. And then my colleague Halsey Rogers will talk about what governments can do. Even before COVID-19, education systems around the world were in trouble. Globally, about 53% of children cannot read for meaning by age 10. With COVID-19, one of the first impacts were school closures. At the end of April, about 85% of children worldwide had been affected by school closures. School closures mean, first and foremost, learning will stop. Not only that, but learning inequality will increase as parents with more resources will be able to better support their children learn during school closures compared to the poorer parents. We may also see health and safety impacts as school feeding programs close, as children's mental health is negatively impacted. And for the more vulnerable children, we may also see risks to their overall well-being and safety. Even after schools reopen, most countries will find themselves in an economic recession. This means that the demand for education may fall as households with lower income may not have the resources to invest in the education of their children. We will also see a decline in the supply of education Government resources will be under pressure. Some of education funding may have to be redirected to health or social protection. We may also see that a lot of private schools, smaller private schools close because they cannot keep themselves open with school closures. Together, all of these impacts, the learning impacts, the health and safety impacts, the demand and supply impacts of economic recession can have grave long run consequences for the education of an entire generation. This generation may have lower educational attainment, lower learning, lower human capital, and consequently they will have lower lifetime earning unless government does something. Thank you. So what can we do to prevent the twin shocks from doing this long term damage? What is needed is three overlapping phases of response. First, the coping phase, while schools are still closed. Then the phase of managing continuity as schools begin to reopen. And third, the improving and accelerating phase, which has to continue well after schools reopen, but should start now. The goal of all this should be to recover, but not to replicate the flawed pre-COVID status quo. 
we need to build more inclusive, effective, resilient systems. For the details, I hope you'll look at the report, but in the next few minutes, I'll give you a flavor. First, the coping phase. The immediate priority is to protect the welfare and potential of students during the crisis. And this means protecting health and safety, for example, through hygiene campaigns and reorienting school feeding programs to keep students nourished while they're out of school. But it's also crucial to keep students engaged in learning. So second priority right now is to prevent learning loss and dropout. Remote learning programs are key, but they have to be implemented equitably so that all children and youth can participate, as we'll discuss today. Countries are doing this through creative multi-platform approaches that don't just work for those with connectivity, but combine online with radio and TV, SMS, and printed materials. Parents and teachers also need support, including financial support. Then we have the policies for managing continuity as the schools reopen. The goal here, again, is to ensure health and safety and to narrow the learning gaps that have widened during this crisis. This means rebuilding all the pillars of a strong education system. First, students have to return to school prepared to learn. This will require policies like re-enrollment drives with special tuition support for the most at-risk students. Second, the schools they return to must be safe and inclusive. This requires well-designed health and sanitation protocols, logistics like staggered shifts or alternating weeks of school, and counseling. Without this, parents won't trust the system enough to send their children back, nor will teachers, many of them in high-risk demographics, be willing to return. Third, classrooms have to be equipped for learning. This will be a huge challenge after all the learning loss. The emphasis should be on teaching students at the right level. This requires effective tools to gauge just how far students have fallen behind during COVID, and curriculum pedagogy focused on the most urgent learning needs, like foundational literacy and numeracy skills for younger children from disadvantaged families. And of course, teachers are central. To pay the play the crucial role we're asking of them, they need practical training in the assessment techniques and teaching skills needed to help all students, and especially the most at risk, to recover learning. They also need help to prioritize overly ambitious curriculums. Finally, this will all depend on well-managed systems with a focus on equity and outcomes. What's necessary for that? Good use of data and monitoring in an incredibly rapidly changing environment, something that technology can help with. Also learning from innovations. Nobody knows for sure what will work, so monitoring and scaling up what is working is crucial. And there has to be enough financing equitably distributed to support this recovery. And finally, the third phase is policies for improving and accelerating. We have to seize opportunities to make education more effective, inclusive, and resilient than it was before COVID. We can achieve this by building on the new awareness of what must change, like closing the digital and non-digital divides. This phase should start now and continue well after schools reopen. Many of the same policies that will be essential to learning recovery will also make education systems stronger if they're scaled up in the years after schools reopen. These include teaching at the right level with curriculum that focuses enough on foundational skills for all students with teachers who can assess learning gaps and are empowered with effective techniques to close them. They also include much better use of technology after we learn what works in the coming months. But countries should also reinforce those changes by building back better with the system reforms that can't be accomplished quickly during the crisis. Real reforms to focus the curriculum, strengthen data systems, and now obvious to everyone, invest in resilience. Finally, and I'll close with this, there has to be enough financing to support this recovery and improvement. This means safeguarding education spending in a time of great fiscal strain and focusing financing on the front lines and the most disadvantaged. We must invest in what matters most for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Halsey and Svetlina. In closing, I hope everyone found this webinar as informative and useful as I did. It's been amazing to have so many global experts to help us bridge the worlds of education and technology. 
On behalf of Digicel, I am absolutely delighted to announce that access to many of these incredible platforms will be offered by Digicel and ministries of education to teachers, students, and parents during the months of June and July. Please continue to follow Digicel on social media for further updates on digital education in the coming days. And also for truly amazing prices from our partners. I want to say thanks again to each and every one of our presenters and hope we can stay connected as new possibilities emerge. I must also acknowledge the team behind the scenes at the independent film company and our partner, Adrian OJ at Landmark Event, and of course to you, our global audience. This has been Learning Without Boundaries. I am Jamisha Wright. Thank you and be safe.